also I got black market <laughs> on my This is happening in hotel rooms with someone who's not a certified doctor, right? Yes. Were you scared about complications happening? I'm still scared of complications. If I get into a car wreck and if it smashes my side and if it goes in my bloodstream, then I'm gonna die. Trans cells and everybody knows it. Right now my rate is three grand. Are you a millionaire? You can't be trans your whole life because of male privilege. You live 40 years as a white man in like tech companies and then you transition. You can't say that that person as much as trans is someone who transitioned when they're 16. I got created four months in. Why would someone just get a and not the full surgery? What kind of doctor will let you keep your And I'm like, we gotta get rid of these and then we flush them down the toilet. You bring up being passable. I've had girls like, oh, I'm passable and I will straight up tell them no. I'd rather be an ugly passable person than a smoking hot unpassable trans woman. so excited. I love your work. So I just saw the one with T.S. Madison. Yes. Yeah, that was a really good one. The minute you followed me, I was like, oh my gosh, because, you know, my series is all about queer people and you are the performer of the year for a trans... Is it... Tra are you the trans performer of the year or just performer of the year overall? Uh, trans performer of the year, Aubrey Kate was like, oh my god, you're like, welcome to the Trifecta Sisters because I think me and her are the only trans models who have gotten an Avian performer of the year, the Expos performer of the year, and the T Awards performer of the year. I mean, you put in the time, so what did it feel like? Did you feel like, I deserve this? I, I definitely got yeah. And the winner, winner is Emma Rose! A reminder to the managers and the directors and studios who think that trans doesn't sell, we all know that isn't the case, and it does. Trans sells, and everybody knows it, and I would even argue that the trans girl scenes are like the new girl girl scenes of like the decade. A lot of people who watch lesbian porn have been gravitating to watching like trans girls and cis girls just because it has that edge and it's very new. And I'm having a lot of these new companies finally reaching out to me. Do you have like resentment towards those companies? I know for me particularly like, People that say no to me, I will remember them. The very next day after I had my speech, this agency, I reached out to them a year before, and I was like, hey, I would really want to be represented by you. I know that you don't represent trans models, but I would love to be the first. And they're like, hey, like, it's just something that we don't know right now. It's like, it's like we don't know the market. And they told me no, and I was like, okay. And then the day after my speech, they reached out to me. And I talked to them, and I declined. I was like, no, I've been independent my whole entire time. My biggest thing is just some of these studios was like Vixen and Wicked. They never shot trans before having an agent that has a really high name. I feel like they're way more willing to be like, okay, I'm gonna give it a shot. The worst that's gonna happen is that they're gonna lose money, but it's gonna make it back. You have the following that like major porn stars, cis women have. What well, would make them think that you're not gonna bring an audience? Mm -hmm. It's still so new. Five years ago, if a guy would have worked with a trans girl, he would have been blacklisted. A lot of people are still scared. It is interesting because I feel like we've come so far with knowledge and respect for trans individuals, but at the same time, I feel like these days, there's more conversation and controversy over trans rights and everything than ever before. Oh my God, it's crazy. I feel like I transitioned in 2017 and living as a trans girl who wasn't even that passable was easier living at that time than now because it feels like every single day, it's always someone talking even about like the validity of my transition. I just want to live my life. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. Okay, so this she's- is my, This is why I like saying this. Good for content. Wow. <laughs> She's got it like that. Okay. <laughs> wow. Stunning. Oh, did you want water or anything? Oh, no, I'm good. Thank okay. you. <laughs> oh, my yeah. gosh. Okay, perfect. Wait, and yeah. so, I'm sorry, I'm just like being so nosy. Oh, no Is your house bigger than this in Vegas? Uh, yes, for sure. I have to say the backyard. It's nice. I love living in Vegas so much. Um, I am a, I'm a Vegas girl. <laughs> So after you won the AVNs, did you bump your price up? Like, how does that affect your career? Yes, I did. So I actually bumped it up, um, and I think that I might bump it down. <laughs> I'd rather make $10,000 or $20,000 shooting, like, 10 scenes rather than, like, making less, making, like, 
two scenes. And when you're coming to LA, you're flying yourself out. You're putting yourself up. So you're recouping that with the scenes and everything that you're doing here. Uh, yeah, exactly. And that's why I tell these directors, I'm like, unless you want to pay for my, my flight and my, uh, my hair and makeup and everything, then like I will lower my price if they're like keeping me here for the week. So I had just had Lacey Lennon on my show, who is like a major porn star too. And she was telling me the rates for porn is like 500 to $1,500 a shoot. Oh my god. Is that the same for trans women? Are you getting paid more? Right now my rate is three grand, which is why I am I'm, I'm lowering it. I think that trans studios do pay a lot more for trans girls just because keeping them in the business is way they need that they need them. Um because a lot of girls would rather just work on OnlyFans or a lot of girls would rather just escort. Do you escort as well? I actually haven't escorted in years. I have sugar daddies, of course, but Ooh. um yeah, I I really good ones. <laughs> Wait, so tell me about that. I've had oh Oh God, my show daddy that recently just passed away. He bought me tits. He was so sweet. They're actually relationships for me, but like not an exclusive relationship. How does that them. work? Like, is there like a discussion of how much money they have to pay you to be a sugar daddy? Or is it just kind of like they buy you stuff or? Yeah, they're just talking about price where I'm like, okay, this is like how much I want for a weekend or this is how much I want for a week. I went on like a 12 day cruise across the whole entire like South of Spain with my sugar daddy. It was beautiful. And like, I'll tell him like, okay, this is how much it's going to cost. It's going to be like $10,000 or like this one's going to be 30 grand. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and it doesn't feel it doesn't feel transactional you know what I mean and that's why I love having somebody that I can tell them and like if they want to tell me no or yes it doesn't it doesn't feel like I'm negotiating it feels like I'm talking to a friend so you're here for work right yeah this one is a tub because I need to I need to soak myself up so I had tomorrow which is like seven trans girls and then the one yesterday shot with adult time I can't say who it's with but it was a really good dominatrix scene it was just so, oh my god, it was just a lot of work. And like, so I'm getting my tonsils taken out, I hopefully in two months. And, but I always like lick feet and like oh lick god. bodies and stuff. So I get like tonsillitis every month. <laughs> or like strap like every six weeks. If you are one of those that have been wanting longer episodes and a way to support me and the channel, I started a Patreon. Thank you so much for your support. I think that you can break down the people who like trans girls. One, they like cross-dressers that are very, very, like, you know they're cross-dressers. Then they like trans girls who have masculine features where you can kind of tell, but you can't, like, really be like, oh, that's a trans woman. And then they like trans girls who are completely passable. And I think that all of them are valid. And I, I was all of those, you know what I mean, as I've gone through my transition. And I pulled the same amount of hot guys when I was a cross-dresser than now. So, so you call a cross-dresser someone who's, like, not... I not, wasn't on hormones, yeah. If a biological man says... And now they're trans, so they're women, but they're not on any hormones. That's a cross-dresser in your mm -hmm. eyes. Uh, yes. I Well, I think that's very nuanced, too, because I, I was cross-dressing before, and it was purely for, like, uh, when I started drag. I knew I was trans, but no one else did. I don't consider myself outwardly trans at that point. I think that I would be a cross-dresser. so fascinating talking to you, because I always was under the impression that if someone's trans and they had been trans their whole life, even before they transitioned, you know, they 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 feel trans, <laughs> mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter if they're on hormones or not. Like it, if they're trans, they're trans, not. But it's yeah. just interesting hearing your perspective. Yeah. I am, yeah, I am very, I'm so against that that mindset. I hate it because I'm like. Um, you can't be trans your whole life because of male privilege. And like, there's so many, like, if you can't be a feminist and say like, oh, like you were always trans and then go around and say, oh, male privilege didn't exist because you were trans. You lived like 40 years as a white man within like tech companies and everything, having the best of the best in your life. And then you transition and you have this skewed view of the world. And it's like, you can't say that that person as much as trans is someone who transitioned when they're 16 uh, because it's just, it's worlds away. You bring up being passable is, is that an offensive thing to tell a trans woman? Absolutely not. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, and I've had girls like, oh, am I possible? And I will straight up tell them no or yes. And it's not even anything mean. I'm not sugarcoating. I'm like, yo, if you want to be more passable, this, even like voice. I know my voice is not passable. But everything I've always um, tried to strive for is just natural passability. And with passability comes security. I'd rather be an ugly passable person than a smoking hot unpassable trans woman. I never like talking to trans women about the surgeries because that's not my business, yeah. but I only brought it up because you had brought it up a couple yeah, times, yeah. so I figured you're comfortable talking oh, about sure. it. I've spent definitely over 100K so far, probably like 120 now. Tits were 8K. Body was like 
10K. Actually, I think probably closer to 15 because I had lipo way, way back in the day. I talked with this trans sex worker in Vegas a couple days ago, and she was just talking about how a lot of trans girls get into sex work because they need to be able to afford these surgeries. Exactly. And you're not gonna make $50,000 folding clothes at Old Navy. That also results in a lot of people getting black market work mm -hmm. done because, which I don't shame anyone for doing that. I understand, mm -hmm. like I would do the same thing if I couldn't afford the surgery, but it's very dangerous, right? Yeah, so I got black market <laughs> on my ass. So I had silicone. I got it twice because I got it done in my hips. Mm -hmm. And so many girls asked me this, like, oh, I wanna like get silicone and I'm like, don't do it. I cannot. I want to get it taken out when I can like 30 or something. But even then, I'm so scared that instead of the just them needing to suck it out, I'm going to have to have it cut out and then need a blood transfusion and do everything. I can't sit very long on a hard surface. I try to lay on my stomach as much as possible. I try to massage it. If I sit on anything, I bring a pillow, like especially on long flights. I always have like a big fluffy pillow with me. This is happening in hotel rooms with someone who's not a certified doctor, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, um, I love her though, but she... Um, and she's I, known amongst like the girls. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But um, yeah, I got injected. Were you scared about complications happening? Because can't they just do one wrong move and you're f***ed? I'm still scared of complications. If I get into a car wreck and if it, it smashes my side and if it goes in my bloodstream, then I'm going to die. After getting it done, I'm like, was it worth it? Probably not. I was curious to learn more about Emma's personal life outside of her career. Are you close with your parents? Uh, my dad is my best friend. I am adopted. My dad is my biological uncle because my biological parents are drug addicts and so they um, couldn't get off drugs and me and my two sisters were going to be put in foster care. What a beautiful man for taking you all in. Yeah, no, he's amazing. Um, he took all three of you? All three, yeah. He just made it work and that's why he was working all the time when I was a kid. Wait, so can we talk about your birth parents? Do you mind? Yeah, oh my goodness. So This is the first time I'm talking about birth parents. So my biological dad died in a crack house as deserved because he was a horrible man. I mean, he was super abusive. He was raped. I remember stories of my sister saying that like he used to like our mom and like like in the room and like I was a kid and she would like take all of us and like take us to the other room and stuff because he was always on drugs. Then my watch my mom's still alive. I remember when I transitioned and I added her to Facebook because like I didn't talk to her much. But I told her I was like, hey, you can see what I'm doing. Just don't reach out to me. Like, you couldn't keep your kids because of drugs. I don't want to talk to you. I don't, want to, I don't want my kids to talk to you if I have kids. I could never just get over the fact that she gave me up because of drugs. I was like, F you. I understand. I understand addiction. I've gone through addiction in my life because of that. Because she did drugs when she was pregnant with me. I wouldn't have been predisposed to addiction or a personality that likes to do things if it wasn't for that. There's a lot of resentment you have towards your mom. Uh, yeah, uh, and I wouldn't even say mom, I would just say mother. Uh, yes, I'm sorry, I don't no mean that. No worries, no worries. Like me, I feel like also I just have never had a good maternal figure in my life. People are like, oh, what's your role model? And I'm like, honestly, my role model is who I don't wanna be in my life. All the time I was so angry and through anger management I was doing all these things as a teenager and I never knew why and now honestly when I transitioned all of that disappeared I think it was because when the hormones started hitting me like like testosterone hitting puberty I just didn't know how to deal with them and then um, after getting uh, cash um, at the beginning of my transition. So my friend talked me into it and honestly, I'm like, you should not go that soon because of the testosterone crash. I had like almost no suppression in four months that that testosterone drop is, was, oh my God, I was so depressed. I was suicidal. I got created four months in, which was crazy. I don't think I've ever talked to a trans girl about that because I think when I think of surgery and I've talked to girls that have gotten surgery, they mean full surgery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why would someone just get a and not the full surgery. So at the very beginning, I, I was taking Spiroactylone, which is a testosterone blocker, and I was getting the worst pain. My, my joints hurted, my neck was hurting, and I knew it was from the Spiro because when I stopped taking it, I felt better. So my friend was like, she was already frustrated, and she was just like, oh, just get him chopped off. And I was like, okay. So then I go to this doctor, I was awake, and they, they take it off, and it was Ooh. super... <laughs> I didn't go to a, uh, I went to a doctor who was still good, but still I'm like, hey, let me keep my balls. I'm like, what kind of doctor will let you keep your balls? So you, like, you have your balls somewhere. Uh, no, I had them. And then uh, I had to flush them down the toilet. Uh, actually, it's, uh, yeah. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, is this is this like is this something a lot of trans women no. go through? I've never heard this in my no, life. No, no, a lot of well, some girls. There's a lot of girls who get orchiectomies, which is the station. But a lot of no, they, the doctors would never let you keep them. So they he, let me keep them, like a little bag. And, yeah, and like a little jar thing. And then I was like, oh, we have to fly because we have to fly to Florida. So I was like, fuck. And I remember I was like on pain pills, and I felt so bad. And I saw my friend in the bathtub. I took it. I just threw it at her. <laughs> Your balls. Wait, wait. Oh my god, I'm dead. I'm dead. <laughs> yes, and it went glunk, glunk in the water. It hit the side of the tub, and then and then she's like, "You fucking nasty bitch!" And I'm like, "We gotta get rid of these." And then we flush them down the toilet. <laughs> what were you thinking as you flushed your balls on the toilet? I'm like, it's, they look so weird. It was like like a fat fish going down the fucking toilet because they had because there's the but then you still have like the part of the cord that's connected to it. And like when they numb you, you have to take a big ass needle of lidocaine in one and the other. And then like the cord that's connecting them. And literally, oh, yeah, no, it did not feel good. That's why I'm like, I people I tell people, so I'm like, oh, I don't like pain. And they're like, but you must have a high pain tolerance. I'm like, I don't have a high pain tolerance. I just endure a lot of pain. I think that was the first time really when like a lot of people started like looking at me and they're like, oh wow, she's trans. Evil Angel reached out to me like the next, like as soon as it dropped, they're just like, oh, we want to shoot you. And I was like, Evil Angel? Evil Angel is like one of the best studios. And then I shot for them and then I shot for Groovy. And ever since then, it's just been a f***ing come up. It's been crazy. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like you are literally the most in-demand trans mm -hmm. Porn, porn star there is. Yeah, it really, it, it, it is. I went from being in poverty to being in the top, like, 2% in America, which is great. Are you a millionaire? Uh, I've made over a million, so I've, I don't have a million in my account, but I've made definitely over a million in the last um, year and a half. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> it's definitely great. It's, it's so nice. That's why I, like, I give so much of my money to my dad, and like I have a team, and so I'm working to build something sustainable and to build in more businesses that are outside of porn. I know with cis women porn they're very disposable mm -hmm. it's always the next girl from the midwest who can come out and is willing to do anything mm -hmm. and then we'll just toss the other one away yeah. do you feel the same with the trans woman i think that the average uh porn star for a cis girl i think it's a year and a half tops but i think for trans girls i think it's three years on average why is that i think that the pool is smaller so there's less trans girls coming in do you enjoy what you do or you just enjoy the bag that you get from it i love what i do i i love the money that porn makes me but at the end of the day if if I see sex as like, oh, I got to do this or something, it's not worth it for me. You are such a beautiful, warm, energetic person <laughs> that's excited about life. Hearing about your upbringing and the things you've had to go through and where you are today, it's like, it's so inspiring. You're such a warm <laughs> yeah, person. Yeah. Like, and for being as big in, in this porn world as you are, you just seem like so humble and down to earth. And it's really Thank refreshing. <laughs> Thank you. That's my biggest thing is like, humble is key. But also, you gotta know that you're that bitch for sure. I love it. Thank you so much Thank for taking you. time out of your busy schedule in Los Angeles <laughs> to meet with me. It means a lot. Thank you so much. Yay! Perfect. Oh, she's so good. Oh my god. How do you feel? Everything's good. Okay. Okay. Good.